So imagine sitting on your couch, relaxing with your dog, watching a movie, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you hear a crack of thunder come from the sky. And your dog just gets up and hightails it right into the bedroom and underneath the bed. Or let's put ourselves in a hunting field for the first time with our dog. And we're getting ready to put out a bird and we're just super excited to see how our dog is gonna respond. The bird goes up in the air, you crack that 12 gauge off, or 20 depending on what you're using, and your dog just disappears, hightailing it right back to the truck. You know what, that actually happened to me the first day, and that's why today we're gonna talk about how to work with a dog that might be gun shy or sensitive to sounds. I'm Dave Curlander, animal behavior specialist, researcher, and host of the Pack Animal Podcast, and today we're gonna talk about desensitizing dogs to sounds. So if your dog is experiencing these fears of sounds, it's important to understand why first. From my experience, this is an extremely complicated behavior, but I noticed that it's actually revolved around confusion. The dogs don't even really know where the sound is originating from. So if we can show the dog where the sound is originating from, we could effectively remove the fear. So working with a dog that's fearful on sounds, we have to kind of take these into slight segments. So when you have a dog that is afraid of a gunshot or afraid of a, of a motorcycle or a, a vacuum cleaner, we have to kind of look at the, at the situation at hand. So uh, the gun is controllable. The, 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 the motorcycle is controllable. Um, cars passing, believe it or not, is actually a, a controllable scenario. We can actually stage that by staying in an area where there is uh, high traffic. Now the whole point to that is that we can actually build distance because distance obviously makes a difference when it comes to the decibels of the actual sound. And you could slowly break down that proximity as the dog starts getting more comfortable. But you have to build a positive association. You have to let the dog know that the sound equals positive, not negative. So in the wild, when a dog hears thunder cracking down, they actually retreat back into their dens or they seek shelter. Uh, it's just the nature's way of kind of surviving the, the, the weather. So uh, what, what we're gonna look to do when we wanna desensitize our dogs is definitely start with building the distance and get something a high priority treat. Now, this isn't treat reward, and I know you guys have watched my past episodes, and if you haven't, please do. Uh, but you know I'm not all about the, the, the treat reward per se. Uh, I'm more about using food as a positive association. So for instance, let's just take a gun dog for, for example. Uh, eventually, we can start building a distance and put the dog on birds to the point where he becomes so obsessed with the bird that when they hear the gunshot, it equals the bird. Gunshot, bird, gunshot, bird. Now you've effectively flipped the fear into a desire. So now your dog will hear a car backfire and start looking for the bird. <laughs> Now, that's of course, you know, our greatest hope is that it actually goes across the board like that, but sometimes it doesn't. The sounds are different and your dog, some dogs do know the difference between them. Uh, so like I was talking about before, when it comes to cars, just find a busy roadway. And what you do is put your dog on a secure leash and start at a great distance. Allow your dog to get comfortable. You know, whenever your dog is listening to like a sick command, you can give them something, uh, you know, to make them happy, or you could bring a favorite toy and just kind of play with them and then slowly get them closer and closer and closer. Taking their focus off of the cars, which are doing nothing to them, and putting it on you, which is doing a lot for them. So now when we talk about thunder, now we're talking about a little bit different of a variable there. Um, you can't really control when that's gonna happen. I mean, it's pretty good. We could pretty much count in between cracks of thunder and kind of, uh, you know, maybe get some sort of a rudimentary guess on how it's gonna strike. But to be honest with you, uh, one of the things you can seek if your dog has an extreme fear is maybe some sort of a calming agent. Um, you know, there are certain natural treats out there that can train contain uh, tryptophan, which is like a high concentration of turkey. Uh, that'll really help calm them down. Um, CBD oils will help calm them down. And in extreme cases, uh, trazodone, things like that, prescribed from your veterinarian, of course, uh, can also help in assisting. Uh, I like to call those things just unlocking the window so that we can get in there behaviorally and just kind of lift that window up easily. Um, so that might be an option for you to check out. Definitely go to your vet and ask them if that is an option for your dog or not. Um, um, but that is definitely, in my opinion, the easiest way to start, just to have that little edge there. Um, but what you wanna do is, 
uh, whenever that 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 event is happening during that storm, you want to bring their energy levels up. You want to bring them more engaged into you. So at that point, I would reserve a favorite toy or something that you could kind of stow away on top of the refrigerator until you hear that crack of thunder. Get up and get them excited. Come on, boy, let's play. Get them really playing tug of war and then take a slight break. Build that anticipation up. Thunder cracks, let's get it, play again. So that this way, it actually just becomes a, almost as a trigger for a positive event. So there's a few devices out there and training techniques that I've heard people using that, um, you know, I have just, I really haven't seen work and I just kind of wanted to mention this to you guys. Uh, one is a CD that plays uh, thunderstorms. I've never seen that work in my experience and uh, I think my experience is pretty significant uh, with working with uh, over 150,000 dogs in, in, in the past 25 years. Um, and. Uh, and I haven't really seen the CDs work because I feel like the dogs do understand the, 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 the difference in the decibels or the unpredictability of it. Uh, also, I firmly believe that there's a whole slew of things going on with weather change, like perhaps like the increase of ozone in the air. Uh, the dogs do um, have their natural wild connection to, to the earth as, as their wild predecessors do, whereas humans, I feel, have kind of lost that. So, uh, you know, they can detect when weather is coming, hence the reason why when big storms come, you really can look outside and not see any animals in sight. Uh, they've taken shelter before the storm even hit. So I would assume that, you know, uh, I've never really seen a, a, a CD work, but if you have, please leave a, a comment in there. I'd love to, to, to hear uh, your experiences with that. Another device that I've heard people use often that, that again, I haven't seen really work is like those compression shirts. Uh, those compression shirts, in theory, they do make sense to me in some ways. Uh, and then in some ways they don't. You know, if we kind of step out of the anthropomorphic view of, of dogs and we start looking at them for who they truly are, their natural mama would never hug them uh, during a storm. In fact, I've never seen coddling behaviors done at all. Uh, essentially, the, the, the closed, closed space uh, maybe perhaps under a weighted blanket or, or under your bed uh, would simulate their, their natural retreat response uh, into, a, uh, into like a, a den. So that kind of makes sense to me. But again, I haven't really seen those work. So if you have experienced a successful event with one of these devices, then uh, please leave a comment and let me know because I, like I said, I just love learning new things all the time. My mission is to give you the necessary tools to provide your dog with a happy and healthy and fulfilled life. So if you like what you hear, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to stay informed on future episodes like this.